All right, welcome to the Excel tip on pivot tables. Pivot tables are one of my favorite topics in Excel because they're so powerful with data analysis, and hopefully you'll see that through this video. So the first thing I want to do is create a pivot table. So I'm going to select the upper left-hand corner of my data, and because my, my panes are split, you can see it goes from 12 to 8,758, I can go to the lower right-hand corner very easily, hold shift, click, and it selects all of my data. And I'm going to go to insert pivot table. And I'm going to do it in a new worksheet, and you can see the table or range that I'm using is the range that I just selected. And we hit OK. So now it creates a pivot table in a new sheet. And so pivot tables, we're going to focus on um, rows and values for the beginning of this pivot table. So pivot tables, basically what they do is they summarize data for you. And let me give you an example. So let's say I wanted to know um, the temperature trend for the time of the day. So let's put in our rows the time of the day, and then let's put the temperature in Fahrenheit in our, for our values. So this is a sum, and a sum of temperatures doesn't really make too much sense. So we're going to change this, instead of a sum, to an average. And so actually, let me drag this up just a tiny bit so you can see what I'm clicking on. We're going to go to Value Field Settings and change it to an average and hit OK. So now if we scroll, if we make it, now we sort of see our trend for temperatures. And it's all well and good, but like usual, we can make a chart of this. So we, this is the trend for the average temperature in Phoenix, Arizona. And notice it's a little, there's a little um, hiccup here. It's reading um, midnight as um, 1 one nineteen hundred, and we could change that if we wanted to. So so that's sort of uh, what we can do. Um, you know, we can see the trend for the, um, the time of the day. We could also switch, instead of time of the day, we could just switch to month. And um, so instead of time of the day, which we'll get rid of, we'll just go to remove field. Now it's the month of the year. So this is the average temperature for the month of the year, um, which is great. So what, what if I want to see the trend of both at the same time? Well, what's nice about this is that I can do rows as a month, and I can do a column as time. So this isn't the right chart to display that, so it shows it very strangely. But you can see now if I want to know, OK, what's the average temperature in April for 7 AM? It's right there. So, so that's the nice little chart. We could also. Um, you know, what's nice about this, and this is something we, we haven't really covered too much, we could input uh, a surface chart for this. So this will give us, and it looks a little funny, but it'll give us sort of this is the um, month of the year, and this is the hour of the day, and it shows us sort of the temperatures. And we can sort of see that the midday and mid-months are the highest, which are the green temperatures in this case. So it's a cool little chart to see that you can sort of see the, the um, surroundings of what's going on um, with, with your temperature throughout the year. So this is something that, you know, if you didn't have a pivot table, this would be very, very difficult to get all that data into this type of format. Because what it's doing is it's saying, OK, it's taking all of those values from, let's say, April and at 10 AM, taking all of those values of temperature and averaging them for you. And it's doing this for every single month and every single hour of the day. So this is something that would be very difficult to do on your own, um, if not virtually impossible. OK, so let's show me, let, let, let me show you one more example. So um, we're going to get rid of the columns for now. We're going to remove that field. We're going to keep our temperature, but um, we're also going to, we're going to add the average, but we're going to add temp, another um, temperature. We're going to add, it's not the sum, we're going to go to value field settings. I know you can't see that, but it's the very bottom. And we're going to go to the max. And then we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to do min. So now we have the max, the min, and the average temperatures. Let's go ahead and plot that. So this is sort of nice, because we can see the trends of the minimum and the maximum temperatures, um, the averages through the months. 
and it gives us a nice little 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 way to do that. So so we, we can also do filters with this. Um, so maybe we want to just filter out um, if we go to day of the week. Maybe we want to filter out. Um, we only want Sundays. So then that changes the values a little bit. With temperature, this isn't very, I mean, temperature doesn't really depend on day of the week, so it's not very helpful. But hopefully you see the real power of pivot tables. We can answer lots of other questions with this, so let me show you one more. So let me show you how to, with instead of um, temperature, let's do solar power and its trend over the months. So again, the sum isn't that isn't isn't great. Um, and if you're not familiar with solar power, the if it's really 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 sunny out, um, watts per meter squared will be higher than 1,000. And if you think about it, the sun's down for half the day, so it's, the averages are much lower than that. So we can do the average solar power, and again we could chart this, and we see again, which is good, that in the summer times, um, especially June, we have the highest amount of solar power hitting hitting the Earth's surface. Um, we could do this. We could add wind speed in here, maybe. Um, so maybe we do the um, average of wind speed. And the charts, you know, maybe we, the problem is with this chart is it's showing the solar panel, and that's much higher than the wind speed. But we could see, we could add another chart, which is just the average of the wind speeds. And, you know, we could we could see what was going on with that. Oops. So, so, that's, so that's sort of the idea um, behind the pivot tables and pivot charts. So hopefully the main idea behind this is that what this is doing, let's, let's just take this one more time, one more example, and I'll talk about it. How this is getting the average wind speed for the first month of the year is it's looking for, it's, it's, for all the values that have a month value of one, it's averaging all those wind speeds. And then it does the same thing for two, and that's the value. Same thing for three, um, for month number three, and that's the value. So this is something that would be really hard to do with just plain formulas, but can show you lots of different trends and, and ideas, and it's a great way to analyze data. So I hope out of this video now you have an idea of how to work with pivot tables and also the real power of pivot tables. Thanks for watching.